Hello Eurovision fans, thank you so much for coming to my channel Eurovision Histories. I want to do another Eurovision 2024 latest news. As you can see, the next Eurovision Song Contest final is in 42 weeks, which is a very long time. But there are already some news trickling in from all around Europe. More countries have confirmed their participation. There is some news from Luxembourg, from Bulgaria, but also about San Remo and about the Cypriot national final, the new national final and at the end of this video I will also give you my song tip of this week and we will have the chart update which I usually did in separate videos but now I'm including them in these latest news updates so we will talk about the success that Loreen still has with the two and also Kadia's incredible chart run in Finland so let's get right to it the first part I want to look at are the new confirmations because that's always very important of course for Eurovision that more countries confirm their participation. This is the result we had last time and since then we have had a lot more countries confirm their participation. I'm going to go through all of them. Switzerland has confirmed. We don't know yet exactly whether they will have a national final or an internal selection but everything points to an internal selection because they've been quite successful doing that and Tia and Selena have also participated in a song Camp and they talked about a song that they heard being performed there that could be the Swiss entry for Eurovision 2024 and all of these kind of tidbits uh, point me to the direction that Switzerland will not have a national final. Different for Serbia who have also confirmed their participation and have also announced that they will have a national final. Then Azerbaijan confirm participation. We don't know yet how they will choose the song. However, they have called for songs to be submitted. When I say choose the song, I'm not 100% sure and I didn't find any information whether they will still continue their approach of focusing on local talent or whether they will again shop around for a pop song maybe written by Swedes or Norwegians or I don't know. So that will be interesting to see. Poland has confirmed participation. I was a bit on the fence, like I had a bit of doubt, not a big doubt whether they would return, but they are back. And then Lithuania is also back. No confirmation about the national final, but since 1999, Lithuania has um, selected their song for Eurovision through a national final. So I'm quite sure that that will happen as well. So as you can see, we went from 18 to 24 confirmed countries. That includes Luxembourg, who are, of course, returning. Now, for the withdrawals and no returns, some of you have said that both Belarus and Russia should be there. Well, yes, but they're suspended, so it's clear that they're not returning. But others who have followed Eurovision news in the last couple of weeks might say, well, you should add Bulgaria because they have officially declared that they are not returning to Eurovision 2024. I am not 100% sure and here is why. Everyone is basing this Bulgaria is withdrawing news on this tweet. Dear the Welsh guy Dan, I don't know who that is, but thank you for asking. Return to the contest is not considered at this point. Best regards, says BNT Eurovision, which is the Bulgarian national broadcaster. Now, when I read this, a return to the concert is not considered at this point. You can interpret that as we're not returning next year and we're not even considering returning at this point at any moment in time. Or you could read it as we have not decided yet at this point whether we will participate in 2024 and we will take the decision later. I do think that it points a bit more towards Bulgaria not returning, but I still have a slither of hope that they actually meant we are deciding later in the year whether we return or not. I would really like them to return because they have sent really good entries through the years. Next, some very exciting news from Luxembourg. We were, of course, all elated when we heard that Luxembourg was returning to Eurovision 2024 after 30 years. And they are even holding a national final with Luxembourg musicians and songwriters, which will be really interesting to see, I think, at the end of January. However, David Glössner from national broadcaster RTL has now also said the following, we aim to do very well at the Eurovision Song Contest next year and to turn a new page for Luxembourg at the competition. And then this is the important part. This is not a one shot thing. So we can expect Luxembourg to stay around even after 2024. They are 
obviously invested to do well and to continue participating in the contest, which I find really, really cool. And he has also said, we are in the midst of planning everything. It's exciting, extremely motivating, but there is also a lot of pressure. I can imagine that there is, but you can really hear the excitement in this statement. And the decision to organize a national selection was a no-brainer. We've been waiting for a long time and it is essential that we bring Luxembourg to Eurovision, back to Eurovision in the right way. So really exciting news, I think, from Eurovision. I'm really looking forward to their national final. By the way, let me know in the comments if you know any Luxembourg artists that you would like to see the Principality, um, to represent the Principality at Eurovision. Next up, Stig Carlsen, the head of delegation for Norway, has had a very interesting interview with the Hungarian podcast, Eurovisios Podcast. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Check it out. It's really interesting, the whole conversation, in which he says that he would love Hungary to return. And he thinks that there's a lot of interest in the country. But doing a Eurovision podcast from Hungary, he would have to say that. So I'm not expecting a return of Hungary, to be honest. However, he also talked about the power of the juries because of course he's the HOD that came out right after the final and said that the power of the juries had to be talked about because um, a song like Finland's that got a massive televote was in the end not the winner and the discrepancies were just being and growing too big and of course Norway also didn't do that well because the juries voted it down so he is suggesting that he will um, well, make the suggestion in the meeting of HODs in September to lower the power of the juries. He mentions maybe a 40-60 split, 60% televote, 40% jury vote for the final result, or even 70-30. Now, he has a lot of arguments why this has to happen. If you want to know what I think about it, I did a video on the pro and contra of abolishing the juries, but I'll give you a quick summary. I think that the juries are really important to balance out the things that the televote showed us in the early 2000s that joke entries, over-the-top entries would get way too much attention and that countries would also focus more on these kinds of songs for the contest. And I think the quality that we've seen in the last couple of years has been partly because we have a jury vote. Also, I think that the televote has a lot of skews, block voting, diaspora voting that would become more apparent if the split was 70-30. Um, I could live with 60-40. I think that's a good suggestion, to be honest. But I would also change the composition of the juries and have a more diverse group than just letting the national broadcaster decide who is on the jury and then sometimes it's a group of people that have are basically of the same age the same profession and then it doesn't really reflect um, a very professional view even though they're all professionals but if they're all of the same profession i think they might overestimate some things and underestimate other things like the fun of a performance for example so i'm a bit critical and i kind of hope that they're not going for 70 30 i think that would be a bit too radical he also said which i completely agree with that you need the jury vote because this reveal of the results which is new the split reveal and the combined televote votes that make this whole thing so exciting in the end has to stay and is a big part of why the show has evolved into an even bigger success and i agree with that and i do hope that they keep the jury vote you might be of a different opinion let me know in the comments <laughs> Um, he also mentions that in MGP, um, there's, of course, auto-tune, and he suggests that if Eurovision wants to keep with the times with other music shows and concerts, they have to let people use auto-tune because it just sounds better. And I kind of understand the argument because if you are a run-of-the-mill person that only watches Eurovision once a year, doesn't really know about anything else, and then watches other music shows as well, you might think, well, on Eurovision no one knows how to sing because you don't even notice anymore that on other music shows you have autotune. However, I don't like this development. I think if you want to be a successful singer, you should be able to sing. And if you represent your country, you should have a good voice and a the ability to perform live because otherwise I don't know what we're doing. So I would be quite against having auto-tune in Eurovision to be quite honest. Let me know what you think again in the comments. Then we're going to Cyprus. Fame Story is the name of the new national final, which is something of a casting show, 
But the candidates that will be participating in this show, and the winner will go to Eurovision for Cyprus, will also learn about PR, social media, songwriting. So it's a very interesting concept. They're not only singing and then one person gets eliminated every week. They actually get the skills that you need to be a successful star in the 21st century. And also a successful Eurovision representative. Really interested to see how this turns out. The first time for a long time that Cyprus has a national final. And I'm kind of glad that they're trying something new. Then next up, we are going to the Netherlands. They have now confirmed that they will have an internal selection. They confirmed their participation right after Eurovision 2023, which is really good. However, there was a bit of discussion whether they would go for a national final again because of the misfortune of Diane and Cooper, the fact that they were not as well prepared as they should have been, and also that they were not able to sing live as good as they should have been able to. And of course, the Netherlands, for the first time in a long time, didn't make it to the final. I was quite apprehensive of a national final because we know what can happen if the Netherlands have a national final. This long streak of non-qualifications were all artists chosen in national finals. And I kind of feared that the golden era of the Dutch at Eurovision might be over. So I'm glad they're sticking with their guns. I hope they tweak the whole process a bit so the artists are actually prepared when they get to Eurovision. But I do think that it's a good thing that they have an internal selection. Next up, we're going to Italy. Amadeus, the artistic director of the Sanremo Festival, has announced that there will be some changes. One of them being that the demoscopic jury that used to be made up of Italians of different age groups tr trying to represent the Italian public as good as possible will be replaced by a radio jury made up of professionals from public and if I understood correctly also private radio stations evaluating the entries. I'm not sure I like this development because radio friendliness to me sometimes can mean kind of genericness which I don't want to see at Sanremo. I love Sanremo for not being generic at all so but we'll see how it all develops and the next part I thought was a joke to be honest because it said that all songs that will be in the Sanremo festival will be performed on the first night and I mean they need four hours to perform 16 songs. I don't know how they're gonna have around 30 songs in one evening. They will be have to be really efficient, I guess. But um, yeah, that surprised me a little bit. But otherwise, um, really looking forward to San Remo, even though the whole radio jury thing, we'll have to see how it turns out to be. Maybe the criticism that Lazza didn't win and that Marco Mengoni won with a quite, gen well, not generic, but with a traditional ballad might have led them to do that. But I'm not sure whether they can actually achieve a better result in the end. Then we're going to Poland. Again, I'm not 100% sure whether this is actually true. If you're from Poland, let me know. But apparently, um, Blanka has tried to trademark the term Bebe in Poland. Um, of course, it has become a meme, even though it's died down a bit, I think. But yeah probably a smart move to do this. Let me know if this actually is the case or whether that was a bit of a joke news tweet that I saw. I couldn't find it anymore, so I couldn't verify it, but I thought it was an interesting tidbit to share with you. Then, this is my song tip for this week. It's Mimiket Weister Saudadesh. I think reading the lyrics that it is a breakup song and I really, really love it. If you like I Kurasao, her Eurovision entry 2023, you will like this song as well. It was released today. The rhythm is a bit like I Kurasao, I feel like. Um, I can see the dancers from her Eurovision performance kind of dancing along to the song in the same way, on a similar way. But it is a song that is sadder because I think it is about the end of a relationship and you can hear the saudade, the um, sadness a bit more than in Ai Curaçao. But I love this woman and I'm so happy she recorded this song in Portuguese. I have listened to her albums in English, which are also very good, but I love national languages. So this song really is up my alley. Check it out if you haven't yet. 
And I want to introduce something new, which is YouTube tip. I want to tell you about another channel on YouTube that I like and that I think you might like, because I don't think we are really in a competition to be um, the best YouTube channel or whatever. We all love Eurovision and so it's nice to share. Today I want to introduce ESC Tom. He is an Irish Eurovision analyst and he makes great videos. And I do think if you like my videos with this nerdy analytical aspect, you might also find his videos very, very interesting. He is trying to live off his YouTube career. So do give him a like and a few views. And I really think you will like his videos but please also come back to this channel that would be really nice now let's get to the chart update again usually i did separate videos for this but i'm integrating it into the news updates the latest news updates now because there just isn't that much to share anymore however there are some chart news which are really cool tattoo has now been certified platinum in greece it did really really well there and is now the eighth most streamed eurovision song ever which is quite the achievement only two months yeah around about two months after the eurovision final so re doing really really well and queen of kings has now joined the very few eurovision songs that have reached a hundred million streams on spotify queen of kings is actually now the second most streamed eurovision song of 2023 regularly and has overtaken cha 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 and tattoo still gets around 1.3 million streams a day on spotify alone which is a great great success talking about cha 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 and kerdie he has continued his chart run in finland look at this another number one in finland second week in a row and it is the one two three four five six seven eight ninth week at number one for carrier it's a song that doesn't seem to die in finland Finns love it and they still stream it and buy it and i'm really really happy for him and also in sweden he's still in 14th place actually ahead of loreen so cha 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 is a big hit in finland and sweden let's look at loreen the winner of Eurovision 2023, of course, like you wouldn't know that, sorry. Um, in the UK, she went down to 24th place. The new position will be revealed tomorrow, but I wanted to do the video today. In France, she's gone down from 14th to 25th. However, that is because a rapper released a an album and the entire album, all the songs are ahead of Tattoo. It's still doing really well in the Airplay chart and also in the Spotify chart. So I'm kind of hoping that she might go up again and maybe even enter the top 10 in France. So big, big hit in France as well. In Spain, it's still out of the charts. In uh, Ireland, it's went down quite significantly, but is now quite stable and 38th position. And then in the Netherlands, it is incredibly stable. I really like these countries, to be honest, for Tattoo, because it is just incredibly stable in these countries. It was sixth position, then fifth, then sixth, and now it's in seventh. Still in the top 10, still a big hit. Really great result in Switzerland, really, really stable. Six, six, five, and now it's in sixth position again. In Austria, going down a bit, but still in the top 20. And then this. I mean, Flanders is the first one, nine weeks at number one. And even in Valonia, in the French-speaking part of Belgium, it has now been number one for five weeks. So it's just an incredibly big hit in Belgium as well. Really happy for Loreen, for Tattoo, and an extension for Eurovision to have produced such a successful entry and entries, if you include Cha Cha Cha, Queen of Kings, and some others as well. This is my latest news on Eurovision 2024. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this channel if you're interested in these latest news updates. I'm also making more videos on Eurovision history, um, preparing more stuff for Eurovision 2024. So if you want, subscribe and please come back for my next video if you want to. Bye-bye.